and, and so th this, just show, this just shows that, that there seems to be some unusual em emission. We, we would like to have some more controlled tests, um, but initially th this shows that there could be some unusual behavior occurring. Uh, if you go to slide 12 uh, with the uh, x-ray, um, the image doesn't show up, uh, the object doesn't show up very well uh, on these images. Um, uh, and so, uh, again, we'll post these on the website. But you can, you can clearly, well, if you look carefully, uh, you can see that there's an object um, uh, showing uh, right next to the uh, bone, uh, but separated from, from the bone in, in the, in the uh, subject's toe. And uh, the optical microscopy, um, uh, there's essentially three different columns in the press pack. Um, and um, the first column shows the object under low magnification. Um, uh, the second column shows the object under higher magnification. And the last column, um, just for comparison, shows um, um, meteorite fragments. And you can see there's similarities and there's also some differences. Uh, similarities, it has the same uh, color tones. It likely has uh, similar composition and oxides. Um, the difference, uh, the biggest difference, is that the object taken out, taken out of the subject's um, uh, body um, had uh, some kind of a sheen to it, um, which possibly could be uh, a silicon uh, material or some other hard material, hard shell. And, uh, and then if you go to uh, slide 14, uh, you can see the results, at least for the um, scanning electron microscopy. And here again, we've got uh, uh, different columns with different sorts of materials. The first column, the column on the left, you can see the, there's, um, this is actually from the object itself, and it shows um, some kind of nanofibers. And um, for comparison, in the middle column, um, you can see that uh, we've got a, a standard image of carbon nanotubes, single wall of carbon nanotubes. And there's certainly similarity uh, in, in the scales and, and lengths. Uh, and, and then uh, also uh, an, an interesting um, uh, nanocrystal showed up as well, um, which turned out to be um, primarily sodium chloride through EDX analysis. Um, but the unusual thing is, first of all, these things uh, form sodium chloride should have a certain type of, type of crystal habit, uh, a, a very cubic crystal habit. Um, sometimes, uh, because of crystal growth reasons, it will be slightly off from that. The unusual thing about these crystals is that they produce an orthorhombic crystal habit, what appears to be an orthorhombic crystal habit, which is unusual for sodium chloride. Um, so uh, this speaks of possibly some kind of um, advanced engineering of crystals, um, perhaps for the use of uh, either uh, harvesting energy or creating some kind of resonator. And, and then supporting that, we have the Raman spectroscopy, uh, which is, shows up on slide 15. And um, we have two graphs here. Um, Raman is, is basically, again, for probing vibrational modes and fingerprinting what types of molecules or crystals you might have uh, in the object. And uh, we've got the, the graph on the uh, left-hand side is, is essentially um, looking at very low vibrational, low, very low energy modes, and the graph on, on the right-hand side actually looks like uh, you probably can't see that. Um, uh, the, the graph on, on the right-hand side shows the higher energy um, uh, um, modes um, within this material. And the interesting thing is um, we compare it with a, a few different um, known materials. Um, one, the, the one with the, the strongest signal, is just pure uh, single wall carbon nanotubes. Uh, it's also compared, uh, the object is, is compared against a meteorite um, uh, fragment uh, and also against silicon. And uh, you can see that there's certain bands around uh, a little, little lower than 1600 wave numbers. And um, uh, that, that there's clearly a band there for carbon nanotubes and there's also a small band that shows up in the object as well um, and, and that band doesn't appear in a regular known meteorite. Now, um, so, so that supports um, the previous slides, the, the, the previous uh, um, scanning electron micrographs, um, that those, those nanofibers um, could be carbon nanotubes. Um, 
the, the correlation um, is, is, uh, is pretty stark, actually. And, and so, uh, again, having uh, uh, something like car um, carbon nanotubes or nanofibers uh, uh, in this sort of object, um, you don't find these things uh, in nature. Um, they have to be somehow processed, engineered, and they're not easy to make. So, uh, and, and of course, the, the field of carbon nanotubes is, is, is going to be rather large now. Um, it, it's, a, it's an area of exploration in, in the sciences. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and so we, we suspect that there's some kind of engineering occurring within this object. Um, the ICP mass spec, uh, the uh, mass spectrometry, which also gives some kind of uh, uh, elemental analysis and, and even can offer some kind of isotopic ratio analysis, um, uh, um, also showed some unusual uh, data. And uh, essentially, uh, and this is on slide 16, um, because of the presence of gallium, germanium, uh, uh, platinum, ruthenium, rhodium, and iridium, uh, in the combination uh, in which these elements show up, uh, um, it, it, it's typical um, of a meteoric sample. Uh, now, there are many different types of meteors uh, that, that have been analyzed, but, but having that combination uh, um, and, and the concentration combinations of those elements uh, indicates that this might be a meteoric sample um, or something along those lines. Uh, also, there was a, um, a, a deviation of nickel. Uh, this is looking, um, yeah, a, a deviation of nickel from uh, terrestrial isotopic ratios that the analysis lab couldn't explain. Um, uh, and it requires further study. And so um, um, the combination of all these things, if we go to the conclusions, uh, the combination of all this data indicates some kind of unusually or unusual um, uh, engineering uh, within this object. Uh, and uh, elemental analysis indicates it's likely non-terrestrial. Uh, it could be meteoric, uh, possibly. It could be something else. The SEM and Raman analysis indicate uh, carbon nanotubes in the object. Uh, to date, carbon nanotubes um, have not been found in meteorites. Uh, there's one meteorite that's been analyzed that showed uh, some kind of uh, carbon onion structures or something resembling buckyballs, but nobody's ever found any anything resembling uh, carbon nanostructures or, or threads or fibers. Uh, so this is unusual in itself. And of course the electromagnetic emissions indicate possibility of a functional device uh, that may serve to monitor or control. Now all this analysis that was performed uh, was performed on a, on a relatively low budget. And you know, to really do a very thorough analysis, we, we need more money to do this work just to pay for the analysis itself. Uh, and, and there's many other analysis that we could do that might show some kind of a, a circuitry or some kind of structure similar, similar to uh, some kind of an operating circuit. Uh, and, and, and so we need to be able to perform those analysis and pay for those analysis and go through the, the, uh, the, the, the whole entire analytical process. In a, in a much more thorough manner. I think that's it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, step, stay right there. Do we have any questions at this time about this? This is very sophisticated stuff. Tom Ballone is a very sophisticated guy. <laughs> the, the two emissions in the megahertz and gigahertz frequency, yeah. you didn't uh, indicate the um, wattage uh, that might be measurable. Also, is this energy harvesting that's actually powering those emissions? It, it, board, right? It, you're right. I mean, we, we really don't know. Um, it certainly could be, and it would make sense. I mean, to power a device uh, uh, over the long term requires some kind of energy harvesting, and there's plenty of energy sources within the body itself, uh, either uh, uh, thermal, vibrational, electromagnetic as well. But you didn't measure the radiation. Uh, not 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 in meter. not in a in a, uh, a fashion that was controlled to my liking. I mean, we, we have to have it in a, within a Faraday cage and, and make very careful measurements. Into yeah. the mic, into the mic. Okay, another question? Richard? Yes, sir. Could you please just summarize, because that went way over my head. Okay. I, I dropped out. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, Sorry. What Dr. Lear asserted, does your research show that this was A, non-terrestrial, and B, a device? 
it's very